Hello everyone and welcome back to another class that we're discussing finite element analysis using Abacus for beginners. So this will be our tutorial example number eight and it will deal uh, with a developed situation from our example number eight. Um, a question can come to mind. Is there any change if we change the type of hole that we have in the center of our plate? So for example, if we have an ellipse instead of a circle, can that affect uh, the results that we got in our previous example? And in order to answer this question, we will do the following. We will have an ellipse instead of a circle. And we'll do like a uh, parametric, uh, parametric study that will study what can happen in our stresses situation, our stresses state, if we change the, uh, the major to minor axis ratio. So let's do this uh, analysis and see what will be the result. Our example will be like following. Uh, we will have the same plate, the template that we uh, solved in our example number eight. And the height of this plate will be 80 millimeter and its length is 160 millimeter. With a tensile stress on both ends uh, equal to P and P in this case equal to 100 megapascal. In the center of our plate, we will have this ellipse. And what I will do, uh, I will study the following. The longitudinal axis, this one, in the vertical direction, that will be the major axis and we will keep it equal to 40. But we will change the minor axis, which is in the horizontal direction. So we will start from minor to major axis uh, uh, ratio equal to one, which means that both axes have the same length. And then we will start to reduce the minor axis a little bit each time and see what will be the stresses in each case. The stresses, uh, so actually we can take only one quarter of our problem and solve it uh, due to the symmetry that we have in boundary conditions. Uh, I mean the, uh, the way of our uh, geometry and the stress distribution. And the stresses that we will study here, we will take the study at the, this point, which is on the top, and we will take the stress at this point, which is the bottom, and discuss what will happen, what type of change that can happen to the state of stresses that we have with changing this length from starting from 20, which is half of the total length of the minor axis, and reduce it a little bit each time. If you do that, and if you follow all the steps that we did in tutorial example number eight, you will get this result. So by looking for this table, we can see that we get the major axis length for 20, which is one half of the total length. Remember that we are discussing here only one quarter of our problem. Then the minor axis reduced gradually from 20 to five millimeters by uh, doing like five millimeter reduction each time. So you can see that the major to minor axis ratio will increase from one to four gradually. In our first case, when it was a circle, the stress in x direction and the top was 438, which is a tension. While in, uh, in the bottom, it was minus 9.5 megapascal or it's only 9.5 megapascal, but it's in compression. So if you try to find the stress in x, in x direction at the top and divide it on stress in x direction at the bottom, you'll find that this ratio is 46. And when we increase the major to minor x's ratio to 1.3, this ratio will be 200 or two. So you can, you can see that by just reducing the minor axis by five millimeters only, we will have a jump in this ratio to be four times than the first one. And when we increase the major to minor axis ratio to two, this ratio will be 643. And by increasing it to four, finally, we'll find that it will be 1,620. It's a huge ratio. 
So what is this case called? It called um, stress concentration, in which actually we can find that the stress at this point by the end is 1600 times more than the stress at this point which is actually something very significant. Now, another question can come to mind. So what can happen if the major axis is too long while the minor axis is too short? Or like if we have um, a crack, which, and we uh, do that analysis by simulating a crack for a very thin, very small ellipse which has very long uh, uh, major axis and very short minor axis so what will be the percent uh, or the ratio that we we are discussing between the top and bottom uh, uh, stresses actually in this case we are moving in a very quick way from uh, elastic state of the material to the plastic state and that will be uh, a totally different story than what we are studying now Okay, I reached the end of my discussion for today. I hope it was helpful for you. See you in next videos. Bye.